back to Lola's In the Pink. I'm your host, Maddie, and today we're going to be doing easy peasy printing. Printmaking has pretty old origins. Um, we can think back to the days of like the printing press when it was first invented. They were able to reproduce things like books, and eventually an artist was like, huh, that means I could reproduce my artwork too. But unfortunately, printmaking, even though there's a variety of techniques, they're all pretty complicated. They require big labs with dark rooms and ventilation and complicated sounding tools like sprayers. But today I'm going to be showing you some ways that we can reproduce our art with just ordinary things that you can find in your house most of the time. These techniques can be used to apply to a variety of materials going from paper to fabric and anything else really that you can think of and we'll be using a variety of different materials to apply to those as well. So let's start with the first technique. So the things that you're going to need are some styrofoam. Anything that is soft and flat is going to work. So meat trays are pretty ideal, but you could also use something like the top of your egg carton or some takeout food. Really whatever you find that's gonna be soft like this is gonna work great. You'll need some scissors a dull pencil, specifically dull, you don't want it to be sharp, some paper or another surface to apply your image to, and washable markers. The first thing that you're going to want to do is cut off all of the edges on your soft styrofoam material. So in this case, I'm just going to cut all four of these edges off so that I have a nice flat, smooth piece. You don't want all this stuff on the back because you're going to be making the indentations. So this nice, really smooth front is going to be perfect for what I need. So let's do that really quick. We're just gonna set the edges aside. Perfect, now I have a nice flat piece of styrofoam. Um, and you don't need to necessarily use any particular size, it just depends on what you wanna create. Now think for a second, what kind of image do you wanna make? It's okay to pause the video and go Google whatever you need to reference. Take your pencil, again, make sure it's dull. You don't want it to be sharp. If it is, color a lot or break the tip and make it nice and soft and round. The reason that we want it to be dull is because we're going to be scoring or drawing into the surface of this and we don't want it to break through the styrofoam. Don't worry if you have a couple of little breaks, but let's try to keep it soft and on the surface. Gently press your pencil into the material to create the desired design. I'm just going to do something pretty simple with lots of open space because that usually prints a bit better. Perfect, now I have my design. I'm just going to trim the excess here. There we go. Now it's a little bit closer. And I have my first little custom stamp. If you want to print onto paper, like I said, you're going to need some washable markers. And you usually want to move quickly with this process because they can dry if you take too long. So I'm going to color in my stamp and you can use as many or as few colors as you like. You could, I kind of usually do it a little bit painterly, a little messy. I kind of just have fun with like the movement of the material. So I just kind of cover all around it. We'll do some yellow. Now remember, when you're going to print this, what you've pressed into the material is going to be white or whatever the color of your paper is. The rest will either be yellow or in my case, green, because I have two colors. Now I personally like to give this a little spritz with water. It gives it a little bit more of a watercolor effect, and I'll show you what I mean. Let's see how it went. See how the edges are soft and a little bit bloomed like that? I really love spraying it because it gives that kind of soft effect. If you want something a little bit crisper with a little more texture, here are a couple of examples of how that'll look. If you print with something multicolor, it'll look like this. You could segregate things into separate colors like that. Or if you spray, like I said, you can kind of get that fun blooming effect. So there's really a whole variety of different techniques and I would recommend just playing with it. The fun thing about these is that you can make as many as you want because it's reusable. 
Just remember that if you're gonna do a multicolor one, make sure to wash off the previous color, otherwise they're gonna mix together. And one of my biggest tips, <laughs> be mindful of the fact that if you write something, you're gonna wanna write it backwards. I actually made a mistake in this one. Can anybody tell me where it is? It's here, <laughs> the little check mark. I actually wrote it the correct way and then it flipped when I printed it. If you have trouble thinking about how to write something backwards for a correct stamp, you could try practicing on a scrap piece of paper or even write it the correct way, print it, and then look at that to reference so that you can draw it the correct direction. So you can create multiple stamps and construct an entire scene if you want to by reusing them and putting them all over your piece. You could create a larger image by taking multiple pieces of a single object and putting them together. Or you could even construct an entire scene on one piece and try to print it out. I actually did this in a variety of different ways. So I used the spray method on this one to create those really soft blending blooms. But on this one, I used a much drier technique and just printed it right after coloring really fast. Um, and I even went over it with my markers. Sometimes it's fun to add line art or other details that maybe the printing technique missed. So this is a really versatile um, medium that you can work with and you can do tons of different things with this simple object that most people could find in their house. You can even use your stamps and apply them to materials like fabric. Instead of washable markers, we're gonna be using acrylic paint for this. So in this case, I just have my little scrap sheet here. This is just my practice to kind of see how the paint interacts with the material. And I would recommend doing this just so that you kind of understand how each of them prints. And you can even add some other brush strokes if you have, you know, just a little paintbrush or something, kind of test things out. So I'll show you how to do that. I'm gonna be using a plastic tray to apply my paint, but you could also do something like a plate. Just make sure to wash it fairly soon after you apply the paint. It does dry a bit quickly. So I'm just gonna make a little bit of a line here with my paint. And you can take a brush, a palette knife, really anything that kind of just flattens the paint out into a little solid area. And we're gonna be dipping our stamps into this. So I'm just gonna try to make it even by going over it a couple of times and really spreading the paint out nice and thin. You don't need a super thick layer. And I'll just put my brush to the side. One recommendation I do have, if you have some tape lying around, a little bit of masking tape or blue tape, anything really works. I'm just gonna take a tiny piece, fold it up, and attach it to the back of my stamp. This just makes it a little easier to grab, whether you just press your finger on or you pinch it with two fingers. I'm gonna just gently press it into the paint. I'm gonna have my little fabric piece ready here so that I can apply gently. And then I like to check it beforehand because sometimes it gets into the creases a little bit. It depends, it may not matter, but it depends on how hard you press. So this is our practice sheet. We can just try a couple, right? And then you're just gonna press like you did before with the washable markers and the paper, some nice even pressure, and there we go. As I kind of suspected, a little bit of the lines got filled in. This doesn't completely bother me. I kind of like the way that it looks, and each one's gonna be slightly different, so I might just do a couple and see how they turn out. You can also use other materials that you find around your house. Things like actual pre-made rubber stamps make really fun for this project as well. I'll dip this in and kind of press it down a little bit. Nice, even pressure. Boom. I've printed another kind of heart. And you don't even need rubber stamps. You could use other random objects that you find in your house that you don't mind getting paint on or just wash it quickly afterwards. So I might use this little spool. I'm not quite getting enough paint on there. So either flatten out your paint again and try to dip it back in or if you're still struggling, you can always just paint the surface and try to make sure it's really smooth. Wood does kind of soak up paint, so this might not apply as well, but I kind of like the texture. It adds some interest. You can also use the pre-made things like 
cookie cutters. That's a fun shape that a lot of people happen to have around their house. And it'll just make the line art of the image. I love that one. <laughs> If you want a pattern of a specific kind, but you don't have something around the house that looks like that, you could even try taking like a scrap piece of wood and adding some hot glue to it. This can create really cool custom patterns and then you can dip those into paint or just cover it with your paintbrush, like so. There's no like fancy technique to this. And then use it as another form of stamp. And again, this is replicatable images that you can just keep putting onto your fabric. You could even use something like a potato masher or two. Dip it into your paint or just paint it with your paintbrush. Let's see what we get here. I didn't quite cover it, but I kind of like how that looks. And I'm going to press it and gently smear it a little bit with my finger, but I think that's okay. We kind of like to go with the flow here at Lola. Now, if you don't just want a random amalgamation of images, textures, and patterns, you could try to design something on your fabric beforehand. I like using fabric pencils because they are sure to wash off when you toss them in the laundry, but really anything that you know will wash off of fabric is gonna work just fine. Construct an image, and then you can use all of these techniques in a variety of colors, as much as you like, to build an interesting and unique new design. One more tip before I go. <laughs> Don't forget to put a piece of cardboard in between anything that you're printing on so that the back doesn't get stained. I have way too many t-shirts that have random splotches of paint in the back because I forgot to put something in between. If you followed along with this today or create some um, artwork of your own with easy peasy printing in the future, we would love for you to drop images of those in the comments, as well as any questions that you guys might have for us here at Lola. We're looking forward to it and we'll see you next week for another In the Pink with me, Maddie. Thank you.